views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Welcome to Conscious Creation with actress, author, and healer, Dee Wallace. If you want to take charge of your life, really take charge of your life, the next hour will be a fun, enlightening experience in creating the life you want. Whether it's money, health, success, or relationships, join Dee in celebrating the power of you and see your life expand into joyful creation. And now, here's Dee. Hello, all you amazing, fabulous, incredible, magnificent, so very loved and darn sexy people. Well, what a weekend I'm having. I'm in Kansas City, staying with my brother and sister-in-law for my 50th high school reunion. And it's been quite an emotional, enlightening trip for me. Um, I was one of the speakers, and when I was sitting trying to figure out from my head what I should talk about, nothing seemed right. And I went, well, you know, I'm just going to go in the channel and ask them. And the channel said, talk about where you're going next. And I went, wow, isn't that just perfect? At a time in our lives when a lot of us um, are believing and living in um, consciousness that kind of presents the illusion that we're finished and that we should now just wait to see what happens. The channel is saying you never stop creating. Get busy. The world now more than ever needs the qualities of love and peace and integrity uh, that our generation worked so hard for. So it was quite a, a moving experience. I all, also shared with my class how my high school was essentially where I saved myself because of the turmoil going on in my family. And that why not in the teachers there, um, that's where I went to discover who I really was and succeed against all other mm, challenges that were going in in my life. So I took the opportunity at the party last night, corner the girl who was my best friend throughout uh, junior high and into high school and then all of a sudden, we just, she wasn't my friend anymore. And I want you to listen to this closely so that you can think about your own perspective. I said to her, you know, I feel like, um, or felt like, well, and feel like, that you just had the opportunity to get with some popular kids. And, you know, I was the poor white girl and um, I wasn't popular enough for you to stay friends with. And she looked at me and her mouth dropped and she said, oh, Deanna, I thought, I looked at you and thought, She's a cheerleader and she's a homecoming queen. She wouldn't want to run around with me. And I want you to see how the perspectives that we carry for years and years in our lifetime can affect our happiness and become how we see all the world through those false perspectives about an idea or or a belief that felt like it was the right thing that was going on. And really it was based in an illusion 
through a time period where we weren't capable of seeing the truth. So I, I urge you to search your lives and really question, is that really what's going on or <clears throat> is that something I made up a long time ago? That is still allowing me not to be the most joyous person I can be in my life. This heart versus head thing, I was working with another top healer over the weekend <clears throat> about some health issues uh, of theirs. And it all came down to, again, our not listening to our heart not falling into our heart, not really feeling into what we really want to do, but going to our head and going, yeah, but I should do this, but I shouldn't be this person. I shouldn't accept myself that way. Um, even though I want to go here, I should go there. And again, the channel is strongly suggesting to us Telling us, encouraging us, go to your heart first and then ask your head, your mind um, to join with your heart in creating the best way that you can get to the place that your heart is asking you to get to. Guys, this came out during a private and I want to read you the sentence. The God I am is the God I've been. We have always, always been the creative energy of ourself. Always. And so there's, again, nothing to fix, nothing to be better than. If you want to be different in some way, simply take your energy and redirect it without judgment as to the God of who you've been. Because the God of who you've been has just been learning on this road all this time. Okay. Well, I can't go. Oh, they want us to balance all this. So do it with me, please. We're claiming the symbol, the formula, the violet flame, the golden light. I am divine love. I am creating anew in every moment right now and so it is now i can go to the call okay we're going to go to pam in virginia hi honey you're on hi d um this is my first time actually getting through i i um i felt very inspired to call and i'm not even completely sure although i can tell you i've been stewing in a lot of frustration of not feeling like I'm creating what I really want and um, finding myself in, in illness once again, very frustrated. And I was wondering okay. if there was any insight you could give me. Yeah, lots. So first of Thank all, well, we're, we're thrilled you got through and we're thrilled to talk to you. Um, it, it's a true statement. You are not creating what you want. The first thing they're giving me is you don't know what you want. And it speaks to what I just spoke to in the first part of the show, in and out. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. And and you are um, literally fighting what you want and what you think you should do or what you're passionate about and what you believe is possible. All of that fighting within us, everybody, creates illness because we are energetically stopping our flow. So there's three things they would like to give you for you to bring yourself into harmony, and this is for everybody. She, but give me a song, uh, Pam. Zippity-doo-dah. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Uh, Zippity-doo-dah is all about joy, and it's pretty much joy for no reason. Thank you for the birds. Thank you for the dogs. Thank you for the leaves. Thank you for the world. Uh, zippity doo da, zippity a. My oh my, what a wonderful day. You don't live there enough. And you don't live there enough because of the second thing. And we're going to the sheet. And we're going right straight to a core belief. Yes. Hold on a minute. Okay. 
Okay, you don't go there because you have this deep-seated belief, and again, I'm talking to everybody here, that you have to struggle to conquer. And they're giving me your mom. So what did your mom have to do with teaching you this incorrect perceptive that creating had to do with a lot of struggle? And if you weren't struggling, you weren't really creating. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true enough. Um, I'm still, um, I'm actually in business with my mom and and I still... (laughs) Um, struggle with her to <laughs> to uh, yeah. create what we want. <laughs> uh, exactly, because that belief is in place. And a belief is something you have got to be true in creating. So if you believe in struggle, you better believe that you will be creating more struggle. So you've got to turn that belief around. And do you need, you don't need your mom, that's a true statement, yes. You don't need your mom to do it. You don't need to turn her around. You just need to turn you around because your vibration will overpower hers and your vibration, she will see then, she will feel it, she will feel the truth, and it will be easier for her to come along. But you're kind of waiting for her because she's the mom and it ain't going to work that way. That sounds right. Does that make right. sense to you? Okay. It sure There's does. The third thing now. She books on. Give me a movie, Pam. Oh, boy. I'm not a big movie watcher. Um, well, shame on you. <laughs> How am I, I going to stay employed if you don't go to the movies? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I tend to um, be very empathetic, and, and they affect me emotionally, so I, I haven't watched movie for a okay, long, long time. Okay, that's where we're going. So that's where we're going. Because you can't not watch the world. The world mm-hmm. is there, and it's more in our face right now than it has ever been before. We are coming to the culmination of decision-making, and it's represented by uh, the breakout in racism, the, um, you know, the political schemes that are playing out in front of us. But on the much larger picture, it is all about head and heart and trusting the hits that we get. That's what it's representing. And it's saying to us, guys, Everything that's playing out in front of you is a part of you. That's the way energy works. If the, the, if the collective consciousness was not creating this yin and yang, positive and negative, polar opposite side, we would not be seeing it played out in the world. So it's our opportunity to come forward, and in your case, Pam, do you want to be happy or do you not? Absolutely. I am tired of being sad all the time. I want to be happy. Okay. Start saying I am happy because I want to be happy in the future. And the biggest way you're going to be happy right now is to know that you absolutely can state it and create it and bring yourself back to it because you have, during this call, I'm checking, turned the belief that you have to struggle to be happy. So so happiness is easy, and I create it every minute. I'm a butterfly. I'm free. How does that feel when I say that? I am a butterfly, mm-hmm. and I'm free. I've been seeing a lot of butterflies the last few months. <laughs> okay, well, there's, there's your confirmation right there. Mm-hmm. So every time, mm-hmm. if you run into those moments of struggle now, I want you to stop. And you don't even have to really address the struggle. 
just notice it and take a deep breath and go, no, I'm a butterfly and I am free. And that will rebalance you so that you okay. can make the decisions you want to make. But go to your heart. And also they're saying, ask yourself, get in the habit of asking yourself, how can I create this easily in -hmm. your workspace? How can I create it easily? And you can even say, they're saying, you can even say to your mom, mom, I think we have this belief going on. We're going to shift it around. I, I, you know, this is, this is the energy I want to hold in the office now. Mm -hmm. But. You've got to do it, darling, because, um, well, they're showing me my reunion again. We've been carrying these belief systems for so long, right, that Mm -hmm. that we we need new ideas coming in that are fresh and truthful. Okay, anything else? So, claiming the symbol, the formula, the vital, claim the golden light around all of this. I am divine love. It was a beautiful call to start the day. I'm so happy you got through. Thanks, darling. Thank you so much. All right. We're going to Paul in Sacramento. Hold on. There we go. Switchboard's a little slow today. Hi, Paula. You're on. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to let you know that I'm at my reunion, too. Ah, my high school reunion. Been. It's I know it's amazing. It's and I haven't seen anybody for since our five year reunion, and this is our forty first. Yeah, it's, it's about that long for me too. But it's I was incredible how many faces, you know, how many essences. I guess that would be a better way to say it. How many essences of people I remember? Yeah. I know, and I um, and I connected with somebody who I was really you know good friends with. And it turns out, you know, she's really into like, you know, studying dreams and her dreams are so incredible. They're so like connected and it's just fascinating. And it's, and it's like, I don't know, this whole thing is so amazing. And it turns out she lives like on the same street that my sister lived on. I mean, right off of it. It's just so amazing. Well, not in my life. That's pretty typical. So I want you to realize that you created that. And ah. your charge that you sent out there created pulling her to you so that you could see how much you had in common now, just like back then. And I am so, so happy. Be- <laughs> yeah, finish, please. You're so happy. Yeah, I'm just so happy that we have reconnected because now we are going to stay connected. Yes, and uh, the channel is saying you should be. It, you're supposed to oh. be connected. There's a oh. real strength and friendship. So both of you were part of this creation process to bring this together. And they're just mm. showing me like like fields of people clapping. Oh, so, it's so in one way or another, um, and it's enough just because it's giving you joy, but um, it's a pretty big thing in your life, this reconnection. It and is. There, I the, feel it. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel it, too. And I feel that That's same so thing neat. with my friends. Um, That's so that neat. I, And with. You know, because, uh, like I said, I shared so much of how hard my family life was. And so many people came up to me and said, my gosh, Deanna, we never knew that was going on with you. We thought you were the happy-go-lucky one in the class. Because I I am innately joyful and happy. I was born that way. But, you see, I my thought my feelings inside of me were that people were looking at me as a poor white trash girl. When in essence, they were going, wow, I love her. She's so much fun. And so, right. So yeah, it's it's really important for you to see from an objective place where people, how people really see you. Because you cannot have the experience of power in the world 
if you keep thinking people see you from a lesser place. Right. And you have to know it's like that's just the the weak the ego part of you that's scared, you know, you know, making yep, those assumptions. Holding you down. Yep, yeah. Holding you down. All right. Well, yep. great. I'm so happy for both of us, Paula. Yes. And I know I heard I, and when you said you were at your reunion, I'm like, I have to call in. <laughs> Good. Yeah, cause it's, it's so neat. It's just so amazing. Yeah, it's pretty synchronistic, our community, for sure. Yes, All right, totally. Guys, thanks for calling. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. All righty, we're going to go to Eileen in New York. Hi, honey, you're on. Hi. <laughs> you know, I wasn't going to call in today, but when you when you started out with talking about your reunion and about how people saw you and, and you know, and, and all of the miscommunications, so to speak, uh, it brought up something for me, which is somebody that I, I was very friendly with. He was actually my boss, you know, when I was teaching. And um, we had a falling out that I never understood. And, and then... As as just fate would have it, I went to a cabaret show that um, of David Friedman, and uh, they escorted me to sit down. And where do they escort me next to him? <laughs> yeah. And you guys don't actually think this is by accident, do you? All these things. <laughs> Come on. I did. I, I didn't think it was by accident, but. I knew that it was the last time I'd ever see him. And he still was not honest with me about why I was on his blacklist. And and it was just left that way. And I wrote a song about it, but, you know, I guess I didn't release all of it because when you were talking about, you know, going to this reunion, it just brought it back up. Okay, so... This is great. I'm so glad that you called. So I just want you to tell me the first thing that comes off the top of your head. So the first, what do the you, first what? what do you think, what do you think, um, why do you think he blacklisted you? Um, the only thing that, that ever made sense was because he he didn't he didn't trust who I am as as a um a spiritual being. Okay. So let's go to the thing in you then that you don't trust as a spiritual being. Hmm. Okay. She took Sean, give me a movie. A movie. Oh. Um I was just thinking of the Martin Luther King movie for some reason. Okay. So Martin Luther King, the first thing they gave me when you said Martin Luther King is I have a dream. And then they also <laughs> gave me E.T. So okay. talk to me about how he took your dream away in your perspective. Well, um... All of a sudden he didn't he didn't believe in me or believe me. Uh-huh. You know, he didn't he didn't see me for who I am and he didn't like it. Well, what I want you to know, which is why you got plugged in when you heard me, was that you allowed him to affect your own perception of who you were. Hmm. His creating this created a lack of trust in your own self-creation. I want you... you Have you read Bright Light? No. Okay. Well, when and if you are so uh, interested, my book, Bright Light, is about this. Okay. And things happen, and we get a perspective about things And that perspective changes who we are. Instead of learning the lesson that no matter what anybody says or no matter what anybody does, 
I get to continually create me and know who I am. You see, when he did this, there's a part of you that put yourself in doubt about the greatness of who you were. Well, there was definitely some kind of of sort of break. You know, I, I don't know. It, it, it's almost like a cord got cut. Okay, but I want you to go. The cord got cut with you yourself. Right. So what cord? What cord? What? They're showing me the umbilical cord. So it was a part of your life your life process, your life energy that got cut. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hold on. Now they're taking this to a corporation. Again, guys, look into your own life and see where this applies. You're going to get a lot of gifts today. This page. Yeah. Okay, these aren't the highest words. The core belief is I have to sabotage what I want or need. The belief is that other people sabotage you. Hmm. So can you talk to me? Can you see that in your life? Especially after this happened with this gentleman. Can you see where uh, you have had thoughts that, well, you know, he's taking me down or they're taking me down or they're not supporting me or... Or I'm not supporting me. They're sabot- and sabotage is the highest word there. So right. when people hurt us like that, and we don't acknowledge the truth that's within us, we sabotage ourselves, but we blame them. Yeah. No, I knew it was something within me, and I knew for some reason that we stopped walking that road together. Yes, and the channel is more interested in the fact that you stopped walking it with yourself. To a degree, you stopped walking it with yourself. And that's why you took the hit when I said that. And that's your great gift that you can have back today. Yes. Right? And Mm -hmm. you want it, don't you, Eileen? I certainly do. Yeah, we, we want all of us to be on board with unconditional love and acceptance of who we are. Knowing the greatness of who we are, and that means with whatever we've created at any time in any place. We accept it, and we accept the responsibility for creating it in a different way if we so choose right now. So it is. That, That was a huge thing for you and for everybody. I hope everybody really listens to, uh, well, all these calls. We're just building on each other, kind of like a webinar. Thank you, darling, for calling in. Thank you. Okay, you can hear the peace in her voice. I'm feeling the peace in me for the shift that that got for all of us. Karen in Pennsylvania, you're on beautiful. Hi there, G. Hi, darling. Because... And it seems appropriate. I manifested this fabulous new job. I manifested a wonderful new apartment. I got rid of a job that had mold that was causing me to have rational kind of immunity problems. I remember us talking about that, yeah. Yes. And this beautiful apartment community, eight minutes from my fabulous new job, I discovered I started a rash five days after being here and immune problems again. They discovered a leak in the bathroom, which I smelled immediately. I don't know why it wasn't handled, but they discovered mold in my new apartment. So I'm, any insights you can give me other than what I've already kind of intuited for myself would be very helpful of what is to really... Uh, I, I think this is right align, in alignment with the rest of the show they're saying. Um, mm-hmm. Let's just talk about what mold is. So what's your understanding of what mold is, Karen? Spiritually, I've seen it as like old, 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 old negativity. 
Well, let's just talk about toxic energy. In, in the physical in the physical plane, what does mold do? It's moisture that sticks around. I, I don't have a dictionary. I'm not at my house or I'd have a dictionary in front of me. Do you have a dictionary where you can literally look up mold? Because it, it's energy that sticks around and gets old, right? Yes. And, yes. And, and then um, stuff grows in it that, that is not healthy. <clears throat> and isn't that exactly what we've been talking about the entire show? Yes. Okay. And I do know that there was some old, old, old karmic energy from long ago that the previous situation was about releasing. And I thought I had released it all, so I was in shock. You when have released Thursday. it all. I, I'm going to ask the simplest question we can ask. Where's the mold in you that you need to eradicate? Okay. Sheet. But give me a song. Um, sun will come out tomorrow. Okay. And then they're also saying to me, I'm forever chasing rainbows or whatever it is, but it's rainbows that they gave me. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, the new apartment and the new job and all of that you created to... Uh, give you happiness. Okay. And it is giving you happiness, but the, the the lesson you're trying to give yourself is that happiness is within you. And it's not going to come out tomorrow. The mold isn't going to go away, and the sun isn't going to come out tomorrow until the sun comes out within you, whether there's mold or not. Whether you're in the new job or not. And again, your mind just wants to fight this, guys, because that's where the struggle comes in, the struggle to conquer us um, believing that we can be happy for no reason. That's where the mold is. Highest, most correct, most complete. So that's the part of you that you want to eradicate. Now, they're saying to me on, on a more physical, practical level, the people in your apartment building are willing to help you with this. Is that true? They're working on it. Yeah, they've got to rip up the whole floor now, and they can't find the source of leak and... Uh, and I just came off of a severe toxic reaction. I was on steroids that made me so ill. I was shaking and I had heart palpitations. And I mean, that I was only off of those for not even a week. When okay. Now, now Karen, they're taking me to your immune system. Because okay. quite frankly, there's mold in just about everywhere we live. So they're taking me to your immune system and immunotherapy. Are we talking on a physical level? No. Jeez, book, song. Give me a movie, sweetheart. Um, movie, movie. The way we were. Okay. So the way we were. Uh, again, is about two people who loved each other terribly and grew different ways. And because they loved each other, they left each other so they could be who they are. Which brings us back to this fight that is going on within us about who we should be and who we are. So where is the greatest fight going on within you right now about that? There's Somebody, somebody, she wants to be some, somebody you want to be and your mind, your heart is really pulling you toward that and your mind is stopping you in some way. Can you tell me what it is? Hmm. Yeah. 
a spiritual, oh, okay. galactic, shamanic interpreter that serves the multiverses. Okay, say that a little plain, a little more plainly, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you want to be is. To say it as simply well, as you can. What what my the, heart is want, wanting me to be is what? A spiritual interpreter, communicator that serves the multiverses. Okay. Your Which mind what tells I you what? Do. Uh, my being doesn't know how to survive like financially support myself at this time with just that. So okay. I'm back to working. Yeah. I'm back to working executive assistant and, um, and I'm once the apartments together, I will be able to focus more on that work. I have had so many distractions. Now I'll be okay. able to focus more on it. So uh, this tells me that, the biggest thing that's going on, darling, is you believe you can't do both at the same time. And you're going, I have to be either or, I have to be either or. Honey, I go shoot a horror film, and in the middle of the afternoon, I do a healing session with a client. Mm -hmm. Okay? You... This is what I want you all to get today because this is the culmination that we've gotten to so far. This is really like a mini webinar here. Um, you never stop creating, Karen. You never stop being a channel. You are always a channel. You are always in the spiritual realm. You just have to access it more of the time because what we do is we go okay well now I'm going to go buy clothes so I don't have to really tap into that spiritual place that I love right mm -hmm. in the buying of clothes at any minute you can move into that spiritual shaman place you want to be the, the challenge for all of us is to know that we're living there all the time, no matter what we're doing on this plane. And there's another piece to this I want to put out there for everyone. The other thing that um, I've lost sight of with all the craziness I've been through right now is plenty of time, energy, and money. I have the energy to do it all. Uh, Karen, you are energy. That's all you are, is energy. And when you keep fighting yourself, you, you create a lack of energy. If we want more energy, we have to go, okay, I accept this. I know I have to do this. I'm choosing to do this now. And I'm going to do this with the greatest joy and creativity that I can within the realms that I'm offered in this situation. And uh, my heart wants to be in that spiritual shaman place. And as much as I can bring that into uh, doing this real estate deal or um, finalizing this contract or doing my taxes, as much as I can be in that place, that's where I'm going to be. Not, I've got to leave that place. And they're showing me you moving. So it's not about leaving a place. It's more about within you knowing that you always are the place. Do you understand? I think so. Well, I think so, or I got it. Uh, I think I have to... Uh... No, you don't have to process it. You just have to get it. <laughs> Wherever I am, there I go. Whatever I'm creating, I have the choice to know I'm creating as a spiritual being. 
whatever I'm creating, whatever I'm tackling, I know I have the choice to go to my heart and be in that state that I so desire to be in. I know that I get to not believe anymore that I have to go in and out of my head and my heart. Do you get, have it yet? Yeah. I, and, well, what I want to say to you is 99% of the time I'm there. Um, yes, but it's steroid. the 1% that's making you sick. Okay. That's a true statement. Yep. Just, so, just more be tweaking. cool. Just be cool and accept the fact that you are a spiritual being, that you don't have to go in and out of being a spiritual being. You are it. We're all it. That's all there all right. is energy to create with. And we get to choose how to direct that energy with difficulty or with ease and clarity. Again, if you look at the election, both sides, that's what's being presented to us to look at within ourselves. Okay, I don't know who to vote for. Right? <laughs> Maybe I just won't vote at all. Maybe I won't take action anywhere. And that is not going to substantiate you creating yourself. That would... And that will exasperate other people having permission to create you. And that's not what we're about. And like in the webinar, if you absolutely aren't going to vote, stay and do the work. Go into that spiritual place. Hold and confirm what you want. Peace, integrity, power, but power through love. Uh, truthfulness, right? You, We all should be working toward the highest choice for our country right now, not focusing on the craziness. Okay? All right, baby. You and in our answer. life. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you, Blessings. Wow. Tonight. Yeah, you too. Good grief, this call. Catherine in New Jersey. Hi, honey, you're on. Yes, hi, Dee. Thanks for taking my call. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, been a fabulous call so far And I really appreciate it I really appreciate you Sharing your story early on About your reunion and what you discussed With your friend that you lost touch with that For whatever reason Thank you. I don't know You're welcome um, I, I, to I totally broke down after hearing that Because obviously there's something <laughs> that I connected to I don't know exactly What I connected with But even the uh, the rest of the call, as usual, uh, they all be late. Um, the one thing I've been focusing on in this last bit of this last caller, um, I've been talking about being happy for no reason, and I've been releasing a few things that could be blocking it, but I'm still getting a no that I can be happy for no reason. And so that well, would be my question. You know, Catherine, if you're even asking the question, then you don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know if you're right. Because... <laughs> The question comes because you are literally not saying, I'm choosing to be happy for no reason. That's who I am, and that's the way it's going to be. You're going, can I? Like, who's it up to if it's not up to you? And if it's up to you, what would you have to do just to say, this is what I'm going to do? If you say you want to walk out the front door, you get up and walk out the front door, don't you? Correct. So... The same thing applies in creation to everything. As you do anything, you do everything. Okay, I'm going to be happy, period. Now, that doesn't mean that the world isn't going to throw you some tests so you can practice. Correct. And, you know, like any muscle, sometimes it's going to be stronger than some other times. Absolutely. Okay. Now, the thing, but that's yes. that's what we get to practice being in that heart centered spiritual place that I was just talking about with Karen. So this right. is why they want to give you so that you understand this this false perception around why you think you might not be able to choose to be happy. She book. Uh, okay, we're going to a play and we're going to the Book of Mormon. 
Okay. Anytime they give me the Book of Mormon, it's about rule. So there's a rule in your life. There was a rule in your family not to be happy. It was a rule. This is the way it is in this house. So talk to me about that. Well, um, it was a very uh, stressful household. My father was a very angry and violent man. So you couldn't really, I mean, you you kind of took your cue from him and you couldn't express something else that he wasn't willing to have. I want you to hear what you just said. You took your cue from him. Hmm. Just like our beautiful first caller took her cue from the guy had kind of blackballed her in the beginning of the, of her career. So are we going to define ourselves then any longer? When we were kids, we didn't know. But are we right. going to define ourselves any longer by what our dad's cue was, what our boss's cue was, what the guy in high school you know, said to us that was hurtful. Are we going to mm-hmm. still decide that's who I am and that's the limitation of my creation? Or are we going to know the truth that our hearts know that we always have the choice to be happy and create ourselves that way? I always have the choice to be happy and create myself that way. You bet. Because as long as you're still going, well, this is the way daddy was, and that's why I can't be happy today. That's why you keep asking yourself, can I? Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, you can. I can. You know, there might be a little journey there of becoming conscious, but every time you start going into this unhappy place, I want you all to ask yourself, is Am I recreating what I did with daddy or the boss or the kids in high school? Is this really truthfully where I want to be with this right now in this moment? Do you understand? Yes. Okay. There isn't anything else. They're saying absolutely you can do this, Catherine, but don't give up after two or three weeks. I'm no, I I'm on this road with you, baby, and it's mm-hmm. it's just working with our consciousness so that Abraham Hicks says you start living more and more and more and more on your high flying disc. And mm-hmm. pretty soon your high flying disc becomes the place that you're the most comfortable. And you kind of get um um attached to that place and it's easier to go back to them. Okay? Yes. Yes. Excellent. All Thank right. you. Is there anything else? No? Nope. Beautiful. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, love your honesty, your willingness to come forward. We're going to Scott in Las Vegas. Hi, Hi Scott. Dean. How are you? Good. How, How are you, Dean? You? I'm Good. doing great. great. Thank you. Um, thanks for taking my call, and I hope the tweets for Papa have been helping. Thank you so much, darling. Yes. Yes, we it's have. a beautiful thing. Thank you. I think we have, um, we need to fulfill four more orders by the end of October. So we're almost there. Almost there. Oh, well, and thank you, everybody that's been tweeting or Facebooking about the little guy, putting in orders. I, I'm Deeply in gratitude. What can we do for you, Scott? Well, um, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, frustrated with, with my business because it hasn't really taken off in the way that I had hoped it would. And now I'm facing, well, I have to go back to work um, in, okay, in the corporate so Scott, world for a little while. Hold on. They, they mm-hmm. want to talk about uh, your words, how you hoped it would. Okay. So basically you didn't really ask for what you wanted because you didn't think you could get it. Mm. Now talk to me about that. Well, I, 
I think the thing with me is that I believe in what I'm doing, but I don't necessarily believe that people care that I'm doing it. I understand and that. I think- <laughs> and you mm-hmm. stated that beautifully. So, again, keeping with the um, theme of the show, do you see that you have a perception about the outside world that they don't care what Scott does? Very much. They're not there to back it. They're not there to um, um, encourage it and promote it and help make it a success. So I'm going to your dad. Did your dad give you that message in some way when you were little, or was that your dad and he modeled it? Or what does your dad have to do with it? I I would say so. Um, it was, you know, growing up, it was very much um, when when I'm at work, you can do what you want. And when I'm home, be quiet. And I don't really want to hear from you. And it wasn't that we weren't loved. It was, he just wasn't a very happy person. Well, the channel loves you. <laughs> and they well, thank you. to differ with you. As an okay. adult, you know that he loves you. As a child... You didn't experience that because mm-hmm. what you experienced was you're not worth listening to. Right. You are not, what you have to say, I don't value. Which to a child means I don't value who you are. And if I don't mm-hmm. value who you are, I don't value what you do. And right. that's, that is the secret to spinning off. And I'm going to take this advice the heart for myself with Buffalopoulou. You see, if we don't see a world that embraces what we're doing, that understands it, that gets excited about it, that wants it, (laughs) if we cannot see that world, Scott, that world cannot come for us in a different way. Right. In a supporting way, in a way that does get it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So even even though you and I both believe very heavily in what we're doing, and we know that that what we're putting out there could be a big benefit to people who are open to experience it, how do we then connect with realizing that there are people that are open to it and and helping it find its way? Well, it's a two way street. I'm going to love myself enough to change my perspective of the world. My dad wasn't right. Uh, the definition that I got about myself from my dad isn't right. And I'm going to do everything in my power to start believing in a world that loves me, supports me, and um, gets this amazing uh, thing that I'm putting out into the world. I'm allowing, just like the charges we've heard uh, of the people meeting their, who used to be their best friend, and Mm -hmm. sitting down with the boss that shunned them, right? Those are charges that were put out into the world to bring completion and understanding that they put out. So we have to put out, and I'm talking to everybody here, we have to put out the charge, I see a beautiful world, and I see a beautiful world that supports me and loves me, and wants to listen to me, and wants to hear what I'm doing, and support what I'm doing. I am important to this world. We have to see a world that sees us. It's part of the four cornerstones, if you want to review the four cornerstones. And um, how I see the world, how I, I see the world seeing me, you know, that. All of those things have to come together. Mm -hmm. How I see myself, how I see the world, how I see the world seeing me, all has to be in place for success. You understand? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And that applies to every caller that we've taken today. There's a strong message to everybody on this show to get yourselves in alignment with your heart. Allow the the world to love you, but most of all, to look at the perspectives that you are holding 
and turn those around so that you can experience the love for yourself and the love that the world has for you. Okay? Thank you so much. Just beautiful, Scott. Good luck to you. This, by Thanks the way, to you. once you get in alignment with this, uh, when you do go back to work, it's going to be a, a, a much greater experience for you in the workforce. Okay. This is going to affect everything, your personal Excellent. endeavor and the workforce. Okay, honey, thank you. Thanks. Um, I tried to get to everybody, but there were a lot of people on the calls today. You know, guys... Let's just choose to be happy, choose to love ourselves, and choose to let the world love us. Choose to see the world we want to live in. Um, Till we meet again, love yourselves, love yourselves, love yourselves more. You know that's what it's all about. And go visit Papa on Amazon. Love you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining Dee on Conscious Creation. Visit her website at imdwallace.com for awesome downloads, archived shows, enlightening webinars, and amazing free offerings. Be sure to join us next week for Conscious Creation with Dee Wallace. And remember, loving yourself is the key to creation. Creation.